Okay, well, good evening, everybody. Welcome. I am calling this meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission to order. Um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this meeting is being done via the Zoom platform. Um, also for notes, this is recorded, so that's something to be mindful of. <laughs> Um, if you are, if anyone has any technical difficulties, uh, you can contact Jamie Lawson at 336-380-7064 for support. And of course, if we have any public comments here to address the commission, please indicate that you wish to speak by using the raised hand feature in Zoom. Or if you're listening by phone, press star nine, and Jamie will notify me that you wish to speak. And per rules, anyone who speaks must get their name and address for the record. All right, so I'd like to confirm that all commission members are and are present. And Jamie, can you do a roll call? I can, sure. Um, Chair Ulyss? Here. Um, Vice Chair Pennington has requested an excused absence. Okay, so I need right. to do that. Then. Um, Russ Vandermas Peeler? Here. Josh Atkins. Here. Wendy Geis. Here. Um, Lori Bryan. Here. And Christina Meinking. Here. Okay, thank you. Okay, so since my uh, vice chair has asked for uh, uh, excused, I'd like to I need a motion to excuse him from this meeting. Hey. Moved. Okay, uh, is there a second? A second. A second. Okay. All right. Um, uh, okay. So if everybody's in favor, can we do a roll call vote, Jamie? Sure. Chair Ulyss? Yes. Um, Russ Vandermas Peeler? Yes. Josh Adkins? Yes. Wendy Geis? Yes. Lori Bryan? Yes. And Christina Meinking? Yes. Okay. He is excused. All right. So moving right along here. So did everybody get a chance to look over the meeting minutes from the last meeting? Uh, are there any changes or anything you think needs to be added or should be corrected? I don't have anything. Okay, everybody sorry, was- Sorry. Okay. So everybody there was okay? There were just a couple of inconsistencies with the spelling and um, address for the consultant from Richard Grubb, so it might be worth just doing a quick find and replace to make sure those are consistent. Okay. That was anything. And that, uh, Christina, you said that was the for the consultants, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, we can we can definitely do that. Thank you. Okay. All right. So moving. All right. So then. I need a motion to approve the minutes with, do I add in Christina's? Uh, just for, for clarification, there were some, we'll make, the staff will make some technical revisions. Okay, so I need a um, motion to approve the minutes with the revisions stated. So moved. Okay, do I have a second? Seconded. Okay, uh, can we do a roll call vote, please? Sure, Chair Ulyss. Yes. Uh, Russ Vandermas Peeler. Yes. Josh Adkins. Yes. Wendy Geis. Yes. Lori Bryan. Yes. Lori shaking her head. She's on mute, but I see her shaking her head. And uh, Christina Meinking. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank you, Lori. All right. <laughs> All right. So it looks like tonight we only have two. Uh, major COAs to um, go through tonight. So I'm going to start with the first uh, agenda item. And this is a request by Mac and Stephanie Williams to demolish their detached garage structure at 412 uh, Fountain Place. And, and are there um, are there any conflicts of interest from with this particular item? Okay, um, so Jamie, can you just kind of give us a brief? Sure, let me um, go ahead and also admit um, the applicant 
Mac Williams yes. and um, Harold Bernhardt, um, his his uh, his um, professional two panelists to okay. okay, Mac and um, uh, hold on, Mac, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yes, actually, this is Stephanie Williams. Um, oh. Mac is uh, had to step away, um, actually, to receive an award. So I'm in his place. Okay, that sounds good. I'm trying to um, promote your um, Mr. Bernhardt. He's gonna. Here he goes. He's gonna have to accept that. Okay, it looks like he's he's coming on now. Yes, ma'am. All right, great. So um, again, I'm, I'm Jamie Lawson. Um, I attest that the information provided is the truth to the best of my ability. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And uh, can you see the um, uh, agenda item number one staff memo? Okay, so, um, so staff received a, a major COA application um, from the Williams um, as you can tell from the packet, they are interested in demolishing the, um, the garage that is located to the top of their driveway as you go up their um, sloped driveway. Um, noted in the staff report, um, so the HPC, um, just as a background, you can't deny a, dem um, a dem demolition request, but you can delay the demolition request for a period of up to 365 days, uh, basically for the purpose of trying to find another willing party or a remedy to the repair, the structure. Um, included in the packet um, are pictures. I'm just kind of scrolling through here. Um, our, our pictures, a narrative, and a report by their um, structural engineer, as well as pictures that show the condition of the garage, and, I, and I've been out there too, um, to the property and have witnessed this in person. Um, so you can see that there's significant structural issues um, and the applicant can speak further to, to that. But their request today is to demolish the structure. Um, I don't, um, staff is recommending in favor of this request. Um, also included in the staff report are memos and maps um, associated with this. Um, I will be happy to turn it over to um, Ms. Um, uh, let's see, turn it over to the applicant, um, Ms. Williams, um, to see if she has anything to add. And I know her uh, professional is also on the call. So Ms. Williams, before you start, uh, do you attest that the information that you're going to provide is the, is the truth to the best of your ability? Yes, I do. Okay. Is there any particular picture or anything that you would like me to go to as you talk? Um, no, I think, uh, I, I assume that you all had seen a copy of this um, yes. prior to this meeting. So, um, yes, the... And I'll let the engineer speak to this as well. Um, you know, we've been told uh, by this engineer and by several people actually that this structure cannot be salvaged. Um, and you can see the deterioration, the cracked concrete. Um, it, there, there really is uh, nothing that can be saved here. So it's unsafe. And um, it's, you know, the, our biggest request is because it is an unsafe structure, um, but it's also um, an eyesore and uh, I think is a, is a detriment to the property. This is a picture as you go up the driveway. So the, the garage is really kind of tucked to the back side of their property. Mm -hmm. Um, and you don't really see the condition of it, I would say, until you drive up. Um, so if you if you guys have maybe been to the property or seen from the street, um, you don't really get to see this all the structural damage. Um, and that's why the pictures, I think, are so important to to present. Uh, I don't know if our engineer would like to speak to this, um, the condition of the structure. I'd be happy to. Um, 
Before what? you start, Mr. Bernhard, do you attest that the information that you're providing is the truth to the best of your ability? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Uh, upon, uh, uh, upon evaluation of the uh, structure, I found that there were three major uh, failures in the structure, starting with the foundation, uh, the multiple uh, areas around the foundation and over half the foundation was in complete failure. The other part was in partial failures, uh, evidence to shifting of the foundation wall and or lack of the uh, integrity of what was trying to be made up of the foundation, including a temporary jack, car jack, that seemed to be used to uh, to add some support. The other two areas of failure, the lower portions of all the walls showed some degree of structural failure due to uh, wood rot or the, or the complete absence of the lower part of the wall foundation. Uh, the third area of concern is excessive span deflection in the roof and ceiling rafters. Um, you know, there was sagging in the roof, there was sagging in the ceiling, uh, rafter members or joist members, which led to a uh, metastable or a questionable stability of that structure above. Um, I think that repair uh, starting repair in, in any of the areas would add instability of the adjoining supporting structures of this detached garage and would basically make it um, um, practically impossible to rebuild or reestablish uh, the stability of the structure. Any, anything else to add, uh, Ms. Williams or uh, Mr. Bernhardt? Uh, nothing for me, thank you. Uh, not unless you have any questions for me. Okay. Um, all right, so are there any questions for the applicant or her uh, or the um, contractor from the commission members? And I'm thinking, um, are there any windows or doors in the structure? I think we've seen most of the pictures and I didn't see any, but I'd check. There is a uh, entrance, a side entrance to the garage, the door uh, was not attached, it was missing. And it was that way when we purchased the property. And then of course the garage door is there, um, but it is not um, historic. It, it, it has a little bit of age on it, but it is it obviously is not the original garage door. Other than that, there are no windows. Um, or other doors. Thank you. Do you um, happen to know the date approximately even of the structure? The house was built in either 1936 or 1938. I can't remember which. I can only, I have no idea if, if that garage was built at the same time or added later. I, that I don't know. Thank you. Okay. All right, so before I get to uh, public comments, are any other commission members have any questions? Wendy Geis, um, I just have a question. It looks like the siding on the side looks um, like the German siding that's pretty rare and valuable. I know a lot of it's got damaged, but if they're able to salvage some of it and you know, donate it to like Preservation Burlington or someplace that would be to me. like, maybe I'm mistaken, but from the pictures, it looks like the old German siding. 
Uh, I believe that it is, and we'd be happy to donate it. That's awesome. Yeah, they're always looking for historic house parts. So, yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, any more commission members? Okay. And uh, Jamie, are there any public, or did anybody call in against, or is there any public comment? I have not. Staff hasn't received any um, calls or emails on this application, um, and so I will just ask if there's any members of the public who are on the call who wants to ask questions or have uh, comments, um, you can use the raise hand feature or dial star nine if you're on your phone. And I am, I am not seeing anyone with their hand raised. Okay. Um, I guess what, like really my question is to um, echo Wendy's, you know, donating that siding cause yeah, the garage probably isn't, but that material is really good. So that would be really great. So echoing to that, what Wendy said, uh, definitely. Approve it. Other than that, I oof, those pictures are, <laughs> I don't know. That's, oh, that looks so dangerous. So, okay. All right, then. So. Before I read in the findings of facts, is there any final discussion from the commission members for the applicants? Nothing here. Okay. Um, Ms. Williams, do you have anything you want to say final or are you good? Uh, I think I'm good. I, I just like to, I just, we just joined the um, preservation society and was at the salvage sale. Um, what, a week or two ago. So I, I'd just like to reinforce that anything that can be salvaged, more than happy to donate it. Thanks a lot. Um, I, so speaking as a commission member, I very much appreciate that. And I think when we shift to um, eventual voting, that can be something that we include so that it's also in the minutes and the record um, for that property. So thank you for that. Yes, that's, that's fine. I, I think that's a good idea. Isn't it? Isn't we? Okay, so all right, so I'm gonna go ahead, as being there's no further discussion, I'm gonna go ahead and read the findings of fact for the record. So G-1, a permanent record of the structure should be made prior to the demolition, photographs and other documentation which describe any architectural features of the structure, important landscape features or the archeological significance of the site will become part of the permanent files of the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, G-2, once all possibilities for saving the structure have been exhausted, usable building materials should be salvaged from the structure. G-3, a demolition permit must be obtained from the City of Burlington Inspections Department. Uh, G-4, any large trees or other important landscape features should be protected during the demolition. Uh, G-5, if the site is to remain vacant for more than 60 days, it should be clear of, cleared of debris, reseed, and maintained in a manner consistent with other properties in the historic district. Um, does anybody want to add to the findings of fact or something that they think feel would need to be added? No, we all good? Okay. Anyway. All right. Well, if there are no as to that, then I would like to make need a motion to approve the findings of fact. So move. Okay. Do I have a second? Wendy guys, I'll second. All right. Um, Jamie, may we do a roll call, but please? Or Chair Ulyss? Yes. Russ Vandermas Bueller. Yes. Josh Atkins. Josh Atkins? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Wendy Geis? Yes. Lori Bryan? Yes. And Christina Meinking? Yes. Okay. All right. So now I need a motion for the approval or denial of this application. So, uh, Jamie, can I do a roll? Can you do a roll call vote? 
or did anybody have anything they wanted to add before? Because I think, Christina, you. Yeah, I was going to add, um, and I'm not sure if I'm doing it the correct way. Sorry, no. James and Jamie. Oh, that's, that's okay. um, if we all added the condition that Pres Burlington be granted access to the structure to salvage what's, or to identify what's possible to salvage and then um, granted access to salvage that material before or wherever that fits in process wise with demolition. During the demolition process. Yeah. Yeah. So they would just, I would assume, just so I understand, they would come on site, is that it? Or would they just come later on after it was? Okay. We'd have precedent for this in other requests. Okay. If there's particular language that needs to be used, I think we could find it. OK. Um, so. So I'm going to, so we're, so we're going to add that the condition being that some from Preservation Burlington is there to collect the materials and is that what I'm getting at? I could be wrong. They're going to identify which which portions of the structures are salvageable and uh, and then those salvageable materials would be donated to uh, Preservation Burlington. Okay. All right, so let me find so then I need a motion to, I want to say, approve the application with the conditions set forth. Jamie? Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to advise that the uh, demolition contractor to agree uh, at the timing of any uh, salvage to be taking place. I am concerned of removing any of that uh, siding prior to uh, the demolition of the building. Uh, right, right. Because that siding is serving as the structural brace for the walls. So it's already unstable and, and any other removal will, will make it worse. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, uh, thank you, that's a good point. I don't think it's the intent that that person would remove any of the siding, I think, the Williams have, you know, that's their task to, to handle. The purpose is to have any of the salvageable material identified and however they work it out with the property owner to have those um, materials removed is, is up to them. Okay. Well, there will be some damage during the uh, lowering of the building per se. Mm -hmm. um, so what you see now is not necessarily what you'll see once the building's down. Um, so, I guess, are there any more before I in motion? Are there any more added discussion or, or are we all good and feel confident in our decision? All right, so then I need a motion to approve the application with the conditions uh, set forth. Okay, all right, do I have a second? A second. Okay, uh, Jamie, can we do a roll call vote, please? Sure, Chair Ulis. Yes. Russ Vandermess Peeler. Yes. Josh Adkins. Yes. Wendy Geis. Yes. Lori Brine. Yes. And Christina Meinking. Yes. Okay. Um, so, Miss Williams, it is clear to go. Um, just, I guess, you know, follow up with the normal, you know, demolition procedures. And I think Jamie, she, does she need a yellow card? Yes, yeah, she'll need to apply. They'll need to apply for a demolition permit through our inspections portal. And then I'll issue the um, the C the COA with the condition. And and then you'll also have the yellow card that will need to be displayed while the work is being performed. Um, I'll also put you into contact with um, Faith Grant, who's the um, is she the executive director? I'm not sure if that's her title, but she's she's associated with Preservation Burlington, um, so that you can 
be in touch with them and coordinate that effort. Okay, that's great. Right? Thank you. If Thank you, you have any much. questions, feel free to reach out to staff. Okay, certainly. Okay. Thank you. All right, good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, so we can then move on to the next item. Okay. So the next item of our agenda is a request by Kay and Robert Norris for several exterior al al alterations to the accessory structure at 1007 West David Street. Um, is there a, um, uh, are there any conflicts of interest with this application? Okay, um, Jamie, do you have a staff report? Yes, I am promoting uh, Mr. Moser and Ms. Norris as panelists. Um, so I'm just waiting for them to come on. Mr. Moser, can you hear me? This is Jamie Lawson. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, great. There's also an, a, an, another person as an attendee, Jim Clark. Is he associated with your item at all? Uh, no. Okay. Okay, great. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, again, it's Jamie Lawson. The information that I provide is the truth to the best of my ability. I'll go ahead and share my screen um for this so this is the second item so staff received a request um from the norrises uh to have um some alterations done um on their on their accessory structure at 10007 west davis street um as outlined in the um, staff report they want to add an arbor porch an entrance to the south elevation of the building, modify the windows on the west side of the structure to accommodate. I think it's mainly to address some of the work that's being done inside. Um, remove the HVAC unit on the north side and, um, and remove a section of the concrete to allow, I think, for the, the porch and the entrance. Um, there's no changes to the existing main house. Um, in the staff report, you'll find the findings of facts, um, map and supporting materials. There's a lot of maps that were prepared, I believe, by Mr. Moser, um, kind of flipping through here to, um, to depict the improvements that I think there's the existing house. And then this is the existing uh, accessory structure as well as all of the drawings um, staff recommends uh, approval of this request, and I will ask um, either Mr. Moser or Ms. Norris um, to, uh, to present and, and add any additional comments if they'd like. Before, before either of you, you know, get into the meat of the case, make sure you I'll uh, affirm your testimony. I'd like to thank the um, panelists for hearing us tonight and thank them for what they are doing um, for the community. Um, Bill will present and um, I will be happy to answer any questions that, that you would like for me to. Okay, thank you. And this is Bill Moser. I wanna make sure I'm not muted. Uh, can you in fact hear me? Yes, and do you test that the information that you're providing is the truth to the best of your ability? Yes, ma'am, I do. All right, thank you. Yes. So I'll be happy to flip through, uh, you know, your materials. Feel free to walk me through what you'd like me to depict. Well, you, uh, I see on the screenshot here uh, uh, the photographs of the uh, of the structure that's to the rear of the property. Mm -hmm. um, the according to the uh, the uh, historic architecture book, uh, this building, this, this residence was built in approximately 1925. And it's a rather unique building uh, in the neighborhood in that it's a, of, a, of a flat roofed. It's an international style stucco uh, uh, materials that are used. Uh, um, and of course, we're at this point uh, only requesting uh, approval for 
uh, the, and, and the receipt of a certificate of appropriateness for the work that we want to perform uh, for the, uh, uh, the accessory building there in the rear. Um, the, the original garage uh, was converted years ago into a workshop. And uh, rather than a conventional garage door, there are a series of, of uh, panels there that bifold uh, and they are louvered. Uh, and in my opinion, probably were not part of the original construction. So uh, in our proposal, we, we want to remove those paneled doors, um, construct a, uh, a new entrance, uh, and, and we, we want to convert the interior, although you all aren't, aren't you know, interested necessarily in what happens inside, but uh, we want to enhance the, the use of this facility uh, for uh, uh, accommodation of guests. Uh, and we uh, want to match the floor. There, there's, there are two rooms uh, to the right uh, that uh, we uh, wish to renovate and then convert what was the garage and is currently the, uh, a workshop uh, into um, a, a, a space that would be occupied for a kitchen uh, essentially a great room and kitchen. Um, and in order to do that, we want to, uh, we propose to add this, uh, this arbored porch, uh, and we want to essentially replicate uh, the uh, existing arbor that is on the east side of the, uh, of the, the, the structure, uh, matching the, the columns uh, and the arbor. Um, there's also an existing vine that, that, uh, that is growing up and, and ultimately we want to uh, uh, have that vine to uh, cover the arbor. Uh, of course, we would use uh, um, the, uh, yeah, there you go. We would, we would use uh, true divided lights uh, for, the, for the windows and for the door, uh, the doors there at the, at the porch. Uh, on the west side of the, uh, of the structure, uh, we are proposing to uh, replace two uh, windows there um, in order to, again, accommodate some of the things that are happening inside. Uh, we, would, we would leave the masonry openings and the brick seals uh, and then replace those with, with shorter windows with an infill panel below the window uh, in order to accommodate uh, countertops that we are proposing to go along that wall. Um, again, we are not suggesting uh, any uh, removal of the, uh, the, the significant features of the balustrades, uh, the stucco finishes, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, then on the north side, we, we didn't actually draw that elevation, but, but there's an HVAC unit, a through the wall unit uh, that's on that side, that, that side of the building, and we want to actually remove that and infill it with a, with a stucco finish. So there you can see that uh, through wall unit that we want to, uh, to eliminate. Uh, we plan to heat and air condition uh, the building uh, from the inside and, and eliminate this through wall unit. That's sort of my original, I guess, narrative uh, for the uh, and summary of the of the application. Um, be happy to answer questions and and add to that if anyone uh, requests additional information. Uh, do any of the commission members have any questions for the applicant? Seeing the mind here, I have a question. Um, what will the material, I know it says matching, but what will the material of the proposed windows and doors and columns be? I mean, uh, multiple questions. I'm going to be yeah, asking yeah, about all of them, but. Yeah, well, the, the, uh... The windows would be a, a wood sash window. Um, the, the, there are storm sashes that have been added to the structure in the past. Um, I don't think we want to necessarily put up storm sashes, but we would like to use insulated glass 
uh, in the in the new uh, sashes, but we will provide a true divided lights. So we won't use the the battens, um, and uh, and the uh, likewise with the doors uh, on, at, from the porch. Uh, those doors would be wood doors. They would be painted wood doors, uh, exterior grade, obviously. Uh, again, with true divided lights. Um, and of course, we'd have tempered glass in, in those doors. Um, does that answer your questions about the doors and the windows? Um, we're, not, we're not suggesting any work with the balustrade at the top uh, or, or, and uh, the columns uh, would be of the same style and essentially the same height as the columns that are on the east side of the, of the uh, and would be of, of a, a Doric type uh, struck, uh, style of the column. It's a rather simple column. Um, with a cap with a, a capital and a base um, and it, it would be would replicate the the, the, the existing height of the uh, of the arbor that's on the east side uh, one other dis additional note on the site plan uh, we're not suggesting any work on the site except the removal of a section of concrete uh, there at the front of the of what used to be the garage. Uh, obviously, uh, we want to soften that and landscape it uh, and uh, enhance the, the growth of the vine to cover the arbor, um, and, uh, but to still maintain the driveway so that we don't uh, lose any, any uh, access through the site. Uh, there is an area located to the east, as you see on this site plan, of the main house uh, where the owner plans to park their vehicles uh, and not use the, the building as a garage. Um, it, it, the, the, the building, again, for years and years has never been used as a garage. Uh, it was a, a workshop. It had been converted into a workshop. Again, um, will the proposed arbor, and I, I hope I'm catching all the moving parts, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but will the proposed arbor have any impact on the existing structure? Um, could it be removed, for example, by a future owner if they so chose without any damage to the existing structure? It, it could. Uh, the, the existing arbor that you see in this photograph here um, was, was bolted to the structure, but, but none of the lumber, none of the wood actually is uh, a pockets into the existing structure. So, um, so we, we plan to, to attach the arbor uh, in a very similar manner um, so that it could be removed and those uh, minor uh, attachments, those, those uh, expansion bolts, if you will, could be removed and the Soka could very easily be repaired. Um, so uh, we, we basically intend to attach the new arbor the same way that the existing arbor was attached. Thank you. Are there any, uh, any other commission members have any questions for the applicant? have one more. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, oh, you're, could you're you walk us through one more time the proposed alterations to those two windows? Uh, there should be an elevation here. Yeah, there's there's a photograph that shows the two windows. Uh, we would leave the brick seals and the, the masonry opening remains the same. But what we propose to do is to is to place a, a shorter window sash within the existing opening, and then to provide a, a, a wooden infill panel, insulated infill panel uh, below the, the new window seal. Um, and that would allow the accommodation of, a, of a, the kitchen counter uh, to run past the windows. Uh, the windows, again, would have, would be, uh, operable double hung units, uh, which match the, 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 the operation of the rest of the windows in the, in the, the building uh, and with true divided lights, the upper portion of the sash. 
uh, and a, a one solid uh, piece of glass for the bottom half of the sash. So they're not, you're not actually moving the windows at all along that wall? Not, you're just not at all. Shortening. Okay. They were just, we're just shortening the window within the existing opening um, there on the west side of the, of the building. Thank you. Yes. Oh, sorry. Are there uh, any other commission members that would like to um, comment? before I open it to the public, if there are any. Okay, um, Jamie, did we, or did staff get any calls or concerns concerning this application? No, we haven't received any calls or emails regarding this application. And there is one member of the um, audience, um, uh, Mr. Jim Clark. I did put in the chat if, um, if he or anyone has any questions, feel free to use the raise hand um, feature or dial star nine. Okay. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Okay. So I guess I will go ahead and uh, read the findings of fact into the record. All right. All right. All right. So for the findings of fact, B5-1, the location of a terrace or patio should complement the character of the site and the historic structure. B5-2, a terrace or patio should be designed so that it can be built or removed without damage to the historic structure or adjoining properties. B5-3, appropriate paving materials are stone, brick, or tile. The choice of the materials should complement the adjoining historic structure. B5-4, historic landscape features such as major trees should be retained and protected when a terrace or patio is constructed. B5-5, the removal of historic building materials to allow for construction of a terrace or patio is not allowed in most cases. Uh, C1-1, original architectural details should be retained if structurally feasible. Original exterior features such as cornices, brackets, railings, shutters, siding, window, architraves, and doorway pediments are an essential part of a building's character and should not be removed. C1-2, deteriorated architectural features should be repaired or restored rather than replaced. If a replacement is necessary, the new material should match the material being replaced. In composition, design, color, texture, and other visual qualities. C1-3, architectural components and details that are not appropriate to the historic character of the structure should not be added. The owner should never try to make a building look older than it is by using details belonging to a previous period. C8-1, original window and door elements, such as sash, glass, sills, frames, casings, hardware, rather stripping, lintels, architraves, and shutters should be repaired and retained rather than replaced. Uh, C11-1, if it built as part of the original structure, a porch and all of its features, decks, steps, handrails, balustrades, columns, brackets, spandrels, roofs should remain in their original state. Porches and steps should not be stripped of any original material or architectural features. If a porch is a later addition, but has become an important part of the building, then the porch and all of its features should be retained. Uh, D1-2, an addition should be designed and constructed so that the character defining features of the historic structure are not radically changed, obscured, damaged, or destroyed. D1-5, structural addi additions should be compatible with the original building in terms of material, scale, proportion, shape, detailing, roof form, windows, etc. And D1-6, removal, removal or alterations to important architectural details on the historic structure to accommodate an addition is not acceptable. Ooh, that's a lot. 
Okay. Uh, did any commission members uh, want to add anything to the findings of fact, or is there any concerns? Yes. We add in, or I would make a motion to add um, that the materials for the windows and doors and columns will be will match existing and be um, consisted of the materials that um, are specified in the application and by the applicant this evening. Okay. So we so that we capture the true divided blade and wood sash and everything. Okay. So that is a motion, right, Jamie? That uh, all right. Well, were you gonna um, were you gonna approve? the findings of facts first, and then Christina, was your add as part of a motion for approval? I don't know. I was just going to mention <laughs> to add them whenever. It, okay. I, yeah, I, I, I think she was going to add that yeah. to the finding of facts. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was before we, vote, uh, before we voted. I think okay. that was the, okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. All right. So then, if I say this right, I need a motion to approve the findings of fact with the addition uh, recommended by Christina. Is that right, Jamie? Right. Oh, good. Fine. Ooh, good. All right. <laughs> Do I have a motion? Lori's. Raising your hand. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Do I have a second? Wendy Guy, second. Okay. Um, Jamie. I'll do a we... roll call. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Chair Ulis. Yes. Okay. Russ Vandermas Peeler. Yes. Uh, Josh Adkins. Josh is saying yes. Okay. You are on mute. Yes. Okay. Uh, Wendy Geis. Yes. Lori Bryan. Yes. And Christina Monking. Yes. All okay. right. All right. So, I guess before vote on the approval or denial of this application, are there any is there any further discussion for the uh, applicants or the commission members? Any? Okay, I will take the silence as a no. <laughs> All right, so then I need a motion to approve the application. Wendy guys, so moved. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, uh, Jamie, can we do a roll call? Sure. Uh, Chair Ulyss? Yes. Russ Vandermas Peeler. Yes. Josh Atkins. Yes. Wendy Geis. Yes. Lori Bryan. Yes. And Christina Meinking. Christina, did we get you? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the uh, applications approved. Um, so for the applicants, uh, just get in touch with Jamie Lawson and she will give you your yellow card that must be displayed during the renovation. Yep, and I would just also add for the applicant, make sure that you're applying for the building permits as well. Um, so th that will also be through our SmartGov portal. All of the applications come in electronically. Um, <clears throat> and it would be helpful. I'll email you a copy of the COA. You can upload that as an attachment as well. So Mr. Moser, I'll, I'll send that to you. Uh, thank you, Jamie. And thank, thanks to everyone on the committee. As I told Jamie, uh, I certainly appreciate everything that the Historic District Commission does because I'm a beneficiary of that living over on Fountain Place. So. Uh, I'm there in the neighborhood, and I appreciate everything that you all do. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So new business. Um, and Jamie, you got my email about 
we were adding that other item that I sent out the committee? Yes. Oh, yes. okay, okay. Yep, yep. So our new business is the update for the district design standards. So Jamie, do we have an update on that? Yes, I will just um, happy, very happy to announce that the contract for the um, consultant has been signed. Um, we had a, um, yay, exciting. <laughs> Let me just do, what do I want to do? Um, I can't do it on here. Let's see. No, I was going to do some sort of like ac action thing, but it doesn't have the reaction. I emoji. guess it doesn't it's have a, this version. Right <laughs> um, and anyway, I think we're all really excited about um, the project and working with the consultants team. It's um, Walker Group. Um, and we had a staff kickoff. Um, we've provided the consultants with all of the mapping GIS um, information that they've requested and all of the background material um, that they've requested too. Um, we will, we've got a really um, ambitious, very, very ambitious schedule for this project. Um, the goal is to have this um, completed um, by June, um, by July rather, um, to the city council for adoption. So that means that um, there's a, a timeline that we have in mind, um, but there's going to be an advisory committee com committee that um, that will be um, looking for uh, representation from the HPC um, to be a part of. And also we've got kind of brainstorming in terms of the other potential um, asks for um, uh, advisory committee members. So we're looking, you know, to have a kind of a, a composition, um, hopefully have, and, and looking also from ideas for you guys too. So if you have any ideas of, or, or are interested in participating in the advisory committee, um, let James know. Um, or if there are people who want to, who want to just say, okay, I'm interested tonight. I don't think we wanted more than two. Um, uh, volunteers from the HPC, but we're also looking to have um, uh, hopefully other members of the local historic district and Glencoe as part of it. We're looking to have um, architects uh, and engineers and, um, and uh, developers, builders as part of it as well. Um, members from Preservation Burlington uh, and any other interested um, nonprofit or other association we would we would like to um, include but we are looking to have the first advisory committee meeting um, sometime during the first week of April so I'll just kind of go down the, the timeline here so you guys know how um, and this is you know subject to change but first advisory committee would be in April and then um, coinciding with your April, um, HPC meeting would be also a kickoff meeting. Um, and then there would be updates to the city council. Um, there would be um, probably a need to have a special HPC meeting um, sometime in um, sometime between April 12th and May 10th. We don't have a particular date. I'll, I'll, I'll be emailing you guys, but just to keep things moving. Um, and then a, another advisory committee in the first week of May, a public workshop um, with your, I think it's gonna be coinciding with your HPC meeting in May um, also. And then, um, and then it has to go to the um, Planning and Zoning Commission for a recommendation, kind of similar to what we did with the landmarks. Um, and then potentially another advisory committee meeting if needed. Uh, and then city council um, work session and then city council public hearing. So um, so that's kind of where things are, are at. Um, we're we're very excited with working about working with this um, consultant team. They're very experienced. 
um, have have worked with communities um, also in, in North Carolina as well, um, are aware of the, 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 the challenges and the opportunities here um, in, in Burlington. So I think you guys will, will find um, that, this, that they're great and, uh, and we're happy to have, um, we had great, great response to our RF, um, RFP, but those were very excited about working with this team. Hey, Jamie, I will say, I know Wendy had messaged me about she was interested in being one of the representatives from our commission. And um, I want to say Brian had mentioned it, but he wasn't, I don't think he was sure if he could. And Christina, I think, did you tell me you might be interested or depend on the time? I, I had to go back and look at my emails. <laughs> For me, it was a tentative depending on time commitment over the next couple of months and that, the timeline you gave us, Jamie, was really helpful. Thanks. Okay. And I'm actually now a Glencoe resident, so I could check two boxes. I don't know, you know, so. Well then, Will, if, if it's okay with, with you, uh, James, we'll, um, unless you want to take like a formal motion and appointment, but we'll just um, anticipate Christina and, and Wendy as um, the, um, members of the HPC who will um, be part of the advisory committee. And obviously based on what I said, you guys fully as a commission will be part of this process um, and engaged, um, so. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with making a motion to nominate Christina and Wendy. Well, will they be able to vote for themselves? <laughs> the only, I mean, because. Sure. It would just be the four of us <laughs> if we approve, or can they I'll vote, vote for, for Wendy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Christina, you got my vote. I I have a question, or I just want to say the with Brian not being able to be sure, and with uh, Christine could have conflicts. Could we, you know, have Brian too, and he and they can alternate? Like maybe Christine can't make this one, but Brian can. I don't know. I don't that's, know if that's, that's I think that's a good idea um, in case there's a, a conflict. Okay. Do we run into any quorum issues? So it'd be, we'd have to like alternate, right? Like somebody would be like kind of backup. Yeah. Never three at the same time. So like an alternate member. Alternate, like, yeah, yeah. Alternate. Um, okay. And the so the kickoff meeting. We would be advertising for the kickoff meeting and the public workshop. Um, I think if it's just two members, uh, we don't necessarily need to advertise um, for any advisory committee, but I'll double check that uh, just, just because you guys um, have had special meetings in the past and I just wanna make sure that I'm following all the proper procedures there. If we need to advertise, it's not a big deal to do so. Okay, I guess I I will um I'll let's we'll let Brian know that he's considered an alternate just in case he forgets and doesn't get a surprise I and mean, it's like oh it's your turn just so he's aware of it because I know he wanted to the, yeah. um so um I honestly I mean to vote on it I think since they've kind of volunteered I mean do we I'm just thinking like voting because they would I would just say all in favor okay. of the you know we don't okay. have to go down there. Oh, okay. Any opposed? Also, all in favor of Christina and Wendy? Okay, I'm good. Aye. Me as well. Yes. Okay, any opposed? Okay, congratulations. Okay. Great. Um, were there were there any, if, if you have any suggestions on any other um members of the public or professionals that you would like staff to reach out to. Um, you know, we have some ideas in mind, but you guys might have some other people too. Um, just make sure to, to send me or James an email. And, and if you could just by the end of the week, um, do that so that we're um, starting to develop a, an outreach list. Yeah, I, I submitted my recommendation, I think, with, um, I know, definitely with Molly. I know she'd be really yep. 
good with that. All right. Um, I guess. So the minor. OK, so then the there's... only the only other thing that I, I wanted to add regarding this topic was we you know we're we're also looking for any um your your brainstorming even before we get to the advisory committee if there are ideas and thoughts that you have that uh that you've had experiences with the existing standards as being challenging or specific examples of things that you would like to have removed have changed and then areas of focus that you would like the the staff and consultants to 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 take a look at i mean i think we all know um some of the difficulties that we've faced um you know looking at emergency protocols and looking at the procedures um looking at um uh use of modern materials um uh solar and and, and renewable energy um there's also been trying to I'm trying to just think off the top of my head. Um, uh, I said emergency protocols. Um, and there's also been discussion about um, treatment of different facades in different ways. So, you know, if there's a if there is um, improvements that are needed to let's say the back of a structure that's not visible is that treated the same way in terms of having to come in front of the hpc versus staff approval these are just different um different uh topics that have come up um there was something else i was going to mention that I keep forgetting it so if you have things in mind um Feel free to email them to me, um, share them. We just want to we want to make sure that we're covering all of the different things that you know you guys have expressed over the years or seen to be problematic. Okay. Um, well, before we get, I don't know, Jamie, if I can ask this, but as new business, so did. Um, city council get the uh what was it yes the uh the other applications for have they made a decision when that would go on their agenda just out of oh curiosity. so the you're referring to the local historic district amendment applications yeah can we do i mean I yeah i mean i can just update you since it's a topic um that you guys have uh had on your agenda previously um so the city council has on their agenda for Monday night, which is the 15th, I think. Um, so the item is listed currently for a public hearing. Um, property owners have been noticed um, and the um, packet has already been sent to um, the clerk's office for preparation. I don't think it's up on the agenda, uh, up on the website yet, but it will be. Um, and then it's uh, going to be a hybrid meeting. Um, so, so there'll be, my understanding is there'll be opportunities for folks to participate via, and, and it's not just for this meeting, but this is the way that city council has been operating recently, um, that there'll be opportunities for folks and the applicants to participate via Zoom if they want to, or, or in public. Um, the meeting starts at seven, I believe. Um, so there'll be uh, this item and I believe other rezonings that were in front of the Planning and Zoning Commission um, recently as well. Okay, and so would somebody from HPC, would it help to be there? I know we can't all be there because then we'd be kind of in a quorum, wouldn't we? Or would it be appropriate for I'm just trying to think, you know, what would be appropriate without, you know. I mean, it's uh, staff can't really advise you whether or not you should attend if, if it's something that you feel like you want to attend. Um, you know, they have received your recommendation um, as well as the planning. It went through the Planning and Zoning Commission and it was recommended um, 
against the removal in a vote of four to three. So that um, went to the city council as well. Okay. I was just curious. Yep. I don't know. It's a, it's a, you can, sorry to interrupt. You can find the um, recording on YouTube on the city website. There's, yeah. How I was able to keep up with it. Okay. Cause I attended the planning and zoning commission meeting. So I know that I just didn't know if the city council had, I was just curious cause there wasn't anything. Cause I was looking on the website for something indicating that, but it's in the works that works. Yeah. I mean, and I, all I would say is, I mean, I guess there's been questions in the past about somebody from the HPC wants to make a comment or a statement. You can certainly say you're, you're making a statement as a resident, you don't have to speak on behalf of the HPC, I suppose, but um, that's certainly up to you all. Okay. I was just curious because I didn't want to do anything that might violate protocol or what's not appropriate. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll be just, you know, we'll be going through the same sort of outline and presentation for that you that we went through for planning and zoning commission and just updating them in terms of what the recommendations were. So okay. that works. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, but that's all for new business. Um, I know we have other business, some minor. Yes, just included in your packet as usual are um, the minor COAs that were approved since the last meeting. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I would assume, is there anything else? I mean, we're... no, I was going to ask if the member of the audience had any questions oh, or okay. wanted to say anything, but he just dropped off. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I guess if we're all good, then I guess I may, I need a motion to adjourn for the evening. So moved. Okay, do I have a second? Wendy guys, second. Okay, uh, you want to do all in favor? That's fine, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay, well, thank Thanks. you guys. Um, and I will say this before you jump off, if I send emails and if I like, like, I know, Christina, I understand if your emails get, you know, delayed. So don't, it's not that I'm, you know, hounding you. I just <laughs> kind of want to, you know, kind of make sure that's, that's my whole thing, you know, so I'm not hounding you. I promise <laughs> I won't stalk you. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all have a great rest of your week. You too. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank take you. care, everyone.